I will take a look at all of your medical records and see what were your injuries and what potential um, what potential complications or future medical care you might require based on those injuries. It doesn't matter what your injury is. If you, even if you feel like it's not that serious of an injury, there may be um, an aspect of future medical care that you don't even think about. Um, and that's where, that's where I come into place. Today, we're excited to have Shirley Doherty as our guest. And Shirley is a nurse. She goes to national conferences all over the country. We had the opportunity and pleasure of working with Shirley over the years. And uh, when you're representing people who had serious injuries or have been in uh, serious wrecks, one of the concerns is what kind of future care is someone gonna need? And more importantly, how much will it cost? This is After the Crash. I'm attorney Dave Craig, managing partner and one of the founders of the law firm of Craig, Kelly and Follis. I've represented people who have been seriously injured or who have had a family member killed in a semi or other big truck wreck for over 30 years. Following the wreck, their lives are chaos. Often they don't even know enough about the process to ask the right questions. It is my goal to empower you by providing you with the information you need to protect yourself and your family. In each and every episode, I will interview top experts and professionals that are involved in truck wreck cases. This is After the Crash. Uh, Shirley, uh, welcome. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your little bit about your background? Well, thank you for having me. Um, I am a registered nurse. Um, I originally obtained my uh, nursing degree in 1994. So I've been a nurse for, for a few years. Um, my main background was long-term care though. Um, when I came out of nursing school, um, I was kind of drawn to, to, the, uh, to the elderly population. Um, and as I started my nursing career and really got deep into, you know, the, my career as a nurse, um, one of the things that I found I, I became very passionate about was determining what the future medical or future care these patients needed. What kind of care is it that we as nurses needed to provide to our patients? Our residents is what they're called in the nursing home. Um, and so I was um, drawn to, to developing care plans for for my patients and for my residents. And that would establish what is it that we as nurses and we and the nursing staff needed to do for, for, for each of our, our, of our patients. And as my, um, you know, as I grew older and, you know, more knowledgeable as a nurse, uh, I came across uh, nurse life care planning. And I felt that that might be something that I could use my um, experience as developing care plans into developing future care plans for people that are injured. And, and I know that you're actually certified, right? And, and tell us a little I, bit about what that is. Um, I am a certified nurse life care planner. Um, I obtained that certification back in uh, around 2009. Um, so well, about over 10 years. Um, part of that process is I did did coursework, um, and it took about a year to complete that coursework. I prepared a life care plan that was peer reviewed, and then I sat for a national certification um, examination, which I passed on the first time. Yay! Um, and uh, once I obtained that, <laughs> you know that certification, um, I continue to um, maintain my, that certification through continuing education. Um, I'm also very, very active within our nursing uh, certified nurse life care planning organization. And, and tell, I mean, tell the folks that, and, and this this podcast is mainly directed towards every every everyday people, uh, people who unfortunately may have had a loved one uh, or themselves who've been seriously injured. Uh, it's not geared towards professionals or lawyers or whatever. Although I certainly have lawyers that watch it. Um, but it's geared towards just every person. I want to empower them. I want them to understand things that are going on with their cases, whether I'm their attorney or whoever their attorney is. They oftentimes are kind of intimidated to ask the lawyers questions. I want them to be able to go to the podcast and learn and say, OK, guys, you know, I am worried about my future care, uh, the cost of the future care or, or the love of my loved one's future care. And I want to learn about that. So I guess, you know, first of all, I mean, what what do you think is uh, important for people to know about uh, about life care planning and putting together um, these medical plans uh, going forward. 
I think the main thing is it doesn't matter what your injury is. If you, even if you feel like it's not that serious of an injury, there may be some aspect of future medical care um, and costs that are related to that down the road and as you age. So even though you may be feeling pretty good right now, um, something may happen um, as you age. And, and, you know, and and I see that a lot with um, people that maybe they've injured their knee in a a fall or, you know, or they were in the car accident and and injured their shoulder. You know, they got a rotator cuff. They may not want to have that repaired now, but as they age and that arthritis sets in, that's that's related to the accident, not necessarily aging. And so there's always, there may be um, an aspect of future medical care that you don't even think about. Um, and that's where, that's where I come into place. Um, I will take a look at all of your medical records and see what were your injuries and what potential, um, what potential complications or future medical care you might require based on those injuries. Yeah, and I think that uh, and it's real important because if someone settles um, at, at and let's say they settle their case, then um, that's all the money they get. They don't get to go back and ask for more money. And so it's right. they get enough on the front end to take care of these things. And, and another thing is you, you may think, well, I've got insurance. I'm covered for now. You know, I'm, I'm covered. So I can go to the doctor and get that taken care of. Well, what happens if you lose that insurance? Um, what happens if, you know, God forbid, Medicare goes under? And we don't have Medicare when it's time for, for us to have um, have that benefit. So you have to make sure that you are, are financially able to cover and the cost of these uh, services, because we all know that, you know, medical care is not uh, the cheapest part of our lives. Well, I think that's important too, because, you know, if you're young, um, you know, uh, and you're, you're injured and you've got future medical care, um, you know, sometimes you're on health insurance policies. Well, you and I both know that back you know, not that many years ago, uh, pre-existing conditions used to be excluded. Uh, right. Used to be excluded. And, and now they're, of course, not excluded. But there's always controversy with respect to that aspect. And there's cases going up in front of the Supreme Court on you know, whether or not that can be eliminated. And so we don't know five to 10 years from now whether pre-existing conditions will be mandatory in, in health insurance plans or not. Um, exactly. And that's scary. I mean, because if you know that your future medical care can be taken care of as long as you have health insurance, that's one thing. But if you don't know and you pl- and you don't plan accordingly, you could be uh, stuck with necessary medical treatment that's not paid for. Exactly. And, and when I prepare um, a life care plan or a cost projection, I am taking insurance and any kind of ancillary coverage um, out of the equation completely. And that's great. I mean, so at least the people that have been injured will know and they can make decisions on their own, but they're making informed decisions. They're making right. decisions on, hey, how much will this cost me um, for the rest of my life? Um, so tell me a little bit, what, what is a nurse life care plan? What does it consist of? Uh, what, is a, what, what is one? <clears throat> so a, full, a, a nurse life care plan um, is, is what we call a dynamic document. And so basically, um, the first steps are, you know, we, we receive the case, you know, we get the referral from, our, from the client, which is the attorney. Um, very, very, very few cases um, would I be retained or hired by a lay person, the actual person. Um, there's other things, there's weird things that are involved with that. So typically we do go through either an attorney or, um, you know, an insurer or a third party administrator. And um, we get that referral, uh, you know, we take a look at the case and what, you know, what's this all about? What happened to this person? And part of that is reviewing the past medical records. So we take a look at not only what happened during the, the injury or the accident, but we also look back, how were they functioning prior to this accident? And so part of that is gathering all these medical records and we we do a medical record review and that's um, part of our process. Um, Another part is meeting with the injured person or with, with the client. So whether um, I do a home visit, which is ideal or a zoom, zoom call 
or just a phone call, um, you know, is really dependent upon their injuries. You know, if it's a chronic pain issue, I may just be able to just do a phone interview. But those people that are severely injured and maybe have a spinal cord injury and they have adaptive, adaptive equipment that um, or home health assistance, I will go to their home and I will talk with everyone that's involved um, in their care and talking with that injured person as well. I like to get input from everyone. Um, I want to know how they were prior to this accident and now what's changed. And so I can put that into the plan as well. Not everything has a dollar amount, unfortunately. So part of the plan is if, in that um, meeting with the family and the caregivers and the client is to determine how are they functioning, um, you know, physically, but also mentally and psychosocially. So um, as a nurse life care planner, I utilize the nursing process. And that involves um, the assessment, which is, again, evaluating the patient via the medical records and the home visit. And then um, I determine a nursing diagnosis. And once, and that's based on everything that I've just reviewed. So that nursing diagnosis is separate than a medical diagnosis. You're going to see all kinds of medical diagnosis. Um, you know, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, at whatever. And the nursing diagnosis is the functional diagnosis of that individual. And so based on that medical diagnosis and then the nursing diagnosis, then I'm going to come up with a plan. And that plan then um, becomes the life care plan. And part of the life care plan, we call it the tables, you know, or the, uh, the uh, is the future medical care portion of it. And I have to rationalize and I have to defend what I put into a nurse life care plan for future medical care. I can't just make it up. You know, it has to be individualized. It has to be based on that patient or that client and their injuries. It can't be a cookie cutter plan. Um, every plan is different. And, um, Determining the future medical care, again, you have to look back at the past. What kind of treatment have they received and at what frequency? And are they going to continue needing that same treatment or are they going to need different treatment? And you talked about you, you, you talk to the family. You, you like to go meet them whenever possible, certainly on a, on a significant case with you know, horrific injuries. What about the doctors? Do you ever have occasion where you need to talk to the doctors that have, have seen them or treat them? That is, a, that is a definitely a part of the life care plan. That's the collaboration portion of the life care plan. Oftentimes, um, you know, I will make contact with the, with the providers to try and get their input. Sometimes they're very helpful. Sometimes they're, they're not, um, you know, and that just is, is dependent upon, you know, that practice itself. Um, I do, uh, utilize the HIPAA, you know, the HIPAA laws. So I, I do um, ad obtain a consent or a release to be able to speak to those uh, providers. But, but yeah, uh, speaking with, a, um, you know, the current treating providers is, is very important in preparing a nurse life care plan. And I think one of the things clients always want to know, though, is, you know, like how do you determine the amounts? I mean, so you, you come up with this plan, um, but then how do you know what numbers to put with it? Because... Obviously, I, I don't know how much a surgery costs or how much it, a doctor's appointment costs and those type of things. And that a lot of that comes with uh, not only experience, but my review of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pages of medical records and billing records. So I part of my medical record review is as I'm looking back at the office. Let's just talk about the office visits at the visits that they go to. I will compare that visit with their billing records, and there are what's called common procedural, um, common pro technique codes, CPT codes, um, associated with every procedure that uh, medical procedure that um, a person may may have. And so, you go to your doctor's visit, you're seen for 15 minutes, and that doctor bills at a particular code code level. They have a charge that is associated with that code, that billing code. And part of what I will do is either contact the, those facilities and get their billing codes and their costs, 
or I, you know, try and take a look at the medical records or in the billing records and see what was billed, what was charged before. Um, or I have um, databases that I can use. Um, the office visits are typically the easy ones. When you get involved in surgeries, there are different codes that are involved with those surgeries, but also just a whole, whole host of other uh, things that are involved, um, you know, anesthesia, you know, the facility, how much, how long do they have to stay in the hospital? Um, and so that comes with research um, and not only research, but, you know, reviewing other cases, you know, gathering that experience from reviewing other, other cases. Um, and then the education that, um, that I received through my organizations. And so the, the goal, explain to me what the goal is then when you're preparing this document, what, what do you hope to accomplish uh, for the clients or for the, <laughs> but, but ultimately for the person who's injured? What I hope to accomplish is to develop a plan that will take this person throughout their lifetime and give them a roadmap of what it is, what the treatment is that they should be getting based on the injuries that they sustained. Um, my ultimate goal is for my, that person to have a copy of the life care plan. Uh, because I do such an extensive medical record review, I, I have given a copy to to clients as the case is settled, and they're able to take that to their doctor and say, hey, this is what I've been through. I don't, you know, they go and every time you go to a new doctor, you have to explain what has happened to them, you know, and so this helps them. Um, and and part of that, it's a, it's a roadmap. Now, we all know that other things may happen, you know, other circumstances or other injuries may occur that may change that plan but um, that's why it's called a dynamic document. Um, it, it, it can change. It need, sometimes it just needs to be updated. But, um, you know, the ultimate goal is for that client to be able to have a copy of that and to follow the plan as that it's outlined. I think that's important because a lot of times attorneys look at their as their job as uh, my job is to get a recovery uh, for a client. And, and I look at it a lot bigger than that. I mean, my difference is I, I look at my responsibility as a, as a plaintiff lawyer or an injury attorney uh, is to make a positive difference in the lives of my client. Uh, and only part of that has to do with getting money. Um, right. and, um, you know, the other part of it is getting some guidance and help. And that's one of the reasons why we do the podcast is I want people to, to know information. It, it's hard to ask your doctors or your nurses or your surgeons, especially you know, you know, you get a very limited period of time that you get to talk to them and some are friendlier than others. And right. <laughs> so, you know, this document you prepare, I use it to help make the recovery. I use it as a lawyer to show the other side, here's how much money I need to take care of my client. But then we give it to the client so they have that roadmap um, so that they can get have the guidance. And my gosh, a lot of times when they look at that, they don't, like you said, they have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the doctors <laughs> haven't told them everything. Sometimes the doctors don't even tell them, you know, what the future holds or what kind of problems or complications they may have. Do you see that? I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do see that. Um, you, you know, and again, when I do this medical record re review, there are times when they had no idea that they went through that, you know, or the doctors even, or the, you know, that was even put in their medical records that, gosh, I, that happened to me. I didn't know that, you know? Um, so, so that sometimes is a shock, <laughs> you know, I kind of, I kind of forewarned the patient for the, the clients that, Hey, there's things in this medical record that you're just going to be uh, maybe a, a little uneasy with, but, but if this is from your, this is what happened to you. Um, especially those in, individuals that have had significant injuries that are still having problems with those injuries. And, you know, they're psychologically, they're, they're struggling with, with the injuries and the impact of their injuries. And then they, you know, they don't want to look back and see everything that's happened to them, but it is important to know. Do, when you're looking at these, do you um, take into consideration anything other than the medical need, like, you know, non-medical needs, or is it just purely medical? It is um, everything. So, so not only medical, but non-medical. So I will look at their home environment. And if they need to have any modifications to their home, I could either put in, a, you know, a stipend of a, a amount of money that could would cover those, or I could 
I could have someone come in and do a home evaluation and provide me with an, with basically a collaborate, a collaborative effort um, on what needs to be done and what that cost would be. Um, I have worked with, they're called um, certified aging and place specialist caps. Um, and they are individuals that can come to the home, look and look at everything in that home that may need to be modified or, um, make that compliant with, with their medical or physical needs. Um, and they will put that in a plan and provide, you know, the cost for me. So, um, I also look at transportation. Can they drive now? If they can't, who's driving them? Um, do they need to have a transportation company? Do we need to provide a, um, a wheelchair van or a modified vehicle for them? And also um, home health assistance. Do they need personal care assistance versus a skilled nurse that comes in? So there's a, a lot of um, different things. When I, when I work with children, there's an educational aspect sometimes. You know, so then I, do I need to look at a tutor? Um, do I need to have um, adaptive equipment for learning? You know, so those are not necessarily medical products, but those are definitely something that is needed because of the injury. They would not have needed it otherwise. Well, I've had the pleasure of working with you for, for a number of years, and, and, uh, and I think it's real important for people to, to be able to recover all they need to take care of them. And I, in one particular case, um, we had where my client had a traumatic brain injury, and I think it might be helpful for people who are actually not maybe uh, the podcast is you can listen to it on on uh, you know Apple or, or uh, uh, Spotify or whatever what, any other place where the podcasts are. But but in addition to that, you can go into YouTube and you can watch it. When you, you can look at it YouTube and actually see the video. And for those people who go on YouTube, I'd like to show them what one of your plans looks like. And obviously, I've taken my client's name out. Uh, but let me see if I can share it on the screen here. Uh, but just kind of so people, you know, again, a lot of people who are listening to this or watching this have never seen a nurse life care plan. They have no idea, you know, what we're talking about. And, and you've done a great job explaining it. But I think sometimes it's helped, helpful to see it. So I would encourage people to go to the YouTube podcast side and see this. But this is the first page of your plan where you identify uh, the date of birth and the age and the date of injury. And I assume life care, you know, life expectancy is important to you because that's helping you plan forward. It is. Um, and when I use, uh, when I include the life expectancy, that is determined through the CDC life expectancy tables. There's um, a table for the total population. And so basically I go to those tables, the age, um, her, this particular person, her age was 22 at the time of the injury. And so based on those CDC tables, the a 22 year old today would have an expectancy, um, a life expectancy of an additional 58 years. That's not a total life expectancy of 58 eight years. That's an additional 58 years. A lot of times when I take these cases, you know, some, sometimes we settle. Uh, a lot of times we settle, but sometimes you have to take cases to trial. And I like to, to refer to these as kind of a minimal, a minimum uh, life care plan because if somebody lives beyond 58, obviously. Uh, they're going to have needs, you know, 58 years, additional 58 years in this case, you know, if this 22 year old lives beyond that, she would have continuing life care plans. And so to me, they're, you know, they're a minimum life care plan. Right. Um, so let's, you know, go through and this, this gives people an idea of the table of contents. Uh, and so this is an extensive document. This is not just a, a one letter, one page, you know, report a letter. Um, you know, here's some of the things that you know, that are, are discussed in there, uh, medical di diagnosis, uh, methodology, met methodology. Um, uh, and, and you go through your assessment um, and a whole, whole variety of things are all, is this a, the type of thing that we typically see in one of your reports? It is, yes. Um, preparing a document, a uh, nurse life care plan, like you said, it's not a one or two or three or four page document. It is a whole nursing assessment, um, you know, again, starting with, a, you know, the nursing assessment, coming up with a plan, implementing it, and, you know, and putting the whole plan together. So, um, I could say that uh, this is probably 
an average, this is a, this is a good five plan. So. And so like you, and you talked about before, <clears throat> part of your assessment is your pre-injury uh, as well as your post-injury. Yes. Uh, and that's important to understand what the difference is be, that was caused by whatever trauma that, that, that brings this person to a, a lawsuit. It is. Um, and, you know, so when I'm reviewing the medical records and, and I will speak with the, with the patient about this as well, what was going on with them prior to the injury, um, you know, instances of the, the easy ones that I call are, you know, if somebody has hypertension or high blood pressure or hyperlipidemia prior to the accident, you know that I'm not going to include anything related to those costs. Um, where we start getting into gray areas is if they already had maybe some arthritis in an area um, and now they have exacerbation of that, of that um, arthritis, then I have to determine how much am I going to include? And so I'll go through. Um, and so in this particular case, so the first, you know, the first part of your report is it goes into the medical diagnosis. And in this particular case, you can see there's three, four, five, six, seven different diagnoses that were determined. Um, and then there's an explanation on how you go about um, doing this plan. Um, yes. So we'll go on down and then, um, and so here you talk about, uh, I think, kind of the holistic approach um, to these plans. And, yeah. and then we get into um, uh, some of your assessment. Um, you, you always have, you know, so obviously some background information, but then Correct. you get into the assessment. Um, and, you know, this kind of talks about more like the history, like what happened to her. Um, right. What brought her here? Um, what happened, you know, kind of a summary of what she's been through. And, you know, you guys, you had to go through big stack of records in this particular case. Yes. To, to get all this and summarize it. And like you said, the clients oftentimes do not know a lot of this information. Right. And, um, and so then here again, it talks about uh, some of my, uh, unfortunately, this client had a significant traumatic brain injury and talks about uh, a lot of that and some cognitive issues that she was having and the doctors that she saw and some of their impressions and their stuff and their diagnosis. Um, and so I just wanted to show how much detail is put into this, um, you know, in, uh, of her injuries, the condition and how it was affecting her. And then we look at your pre-injury and where you talk a little bit about her pre-injury um, and the nursing process outcome identification. Um, what, what is that part of the, of the report? So the, the outcome identification is determined as uh, part of the collaboration. So I have collaborated um, using standards of practice um, and that would be maybe, um, uh, you know, re reviewing, Doc, the, the medical records or um, um, researching in, you know, different aspects of future medical care. Um, and then I determine, you know, there's a medical record review, which is in a different appendix, but that is part of that outcome identification. And then I determine what the summary of the future medical care needs are. And this is the rationale for why I am including certain items in the life care plan tables. Back on the on the medications, um, I just wanted to yeah. point out um, when I'm determining and providing the cost for the medications, it's what they are currently taking at the time that I prepare the life care plan. Those medications may change, you know, based on, you know, they may not work any longer or something new may come along that may be more expensive, but or may be less expensive, but I can only include what they are currently taking at the time that I prepare the life care plan. Okay. And then you also talk about uh, projected therapy and evaluations. Yes. Uh, and in this case, that was significant because of her traumatic brain injury. Correct. And then you talk about home care, facility care. Um, and then you get into case management um, and kind of explain to us what, what is you mean by case management. Specifically, you know, individuals that have um, catastrophic 
injuries, in this case, a traumatic brain injury, a case manager and nurse case manager is what I recommend. Um, they may not have that a nurse case manager currently, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't need to have a case manager. Um, and, and this person will assist them throughout their lifetime with their medical needs. And it may be that they go to their doctor's visits with them, but they want to make sure this nurse case manager will be the person that will help implement the life care plan with them, possibly go to the doctor's visits, but ensure that they are receiving the medical care and treatment that they require based on the injuries. And, and I assume that's real important with a traumatic brain injury client. Absolutely. And, you know, especially those with cognitive um, difficulties and, you know, if they can't remember to, um, you know, to take their medications on a daily basis, how, how are they going to, to know to go to the doctor? And then um, we, you, you go into your nurse process planning um, and your uh, implementation and evaluation. Yes. And then we get to the um, uh, a plan. And, and so as your appendix, this is an example of your nurse life care plan tables. And again, it's not my goal to go through the specifics, but, but this gives people an idea of how detailed uh, one of these reports are. Um, you know, where you're, you know, physical medicine and, and rehab specialists, you're estimating four times per year for one year um, and what the cost associated with that is. Then, you know, physical medicine rehab specialists, um, two uh, per year for a lifetime. And that's, you know, obviously a very expensive, you know, when a lifetime cost is 22000 in this case. So, right. so that you're, you're breaking it down. Uh, for somebody using that life table you talked about, how long is someone expected to live, looking at all the type of treatment that someone might need, um, and then you're figuring out the cost associated uh, with that. Um, in right. this case, also psychiatric and group therapy. Um, and then this is an example of what you talked about earlier, the medication. So you look, you look and see what kind of medication is someone taking, and then you figure out what cost associated with that, correct? Correct, correct. And so, as you can see, I mean, these are significant numbers that if someone didn't do this and they don't have insurance and they're young and for some reason they're not on Medicare, um, these are this could cause major problems for them. You know, and specifically some of the, the medications um, that an individual, and in, in, in her instance, you know, with a traumatic brain injury, the medications that she takes are very, very expensive. Um, you know, psych meds are, are historically expensive. All medications are expensive, but when they're new um, and they don't have a generic component, com you know, involved with them, then they are definitely very, very expensive. Um, and, and as I discussed earlier, those medications may change, um, especially people that have, uh, that have behavioral issues or cognitive issues that um, provisional may stop working and she may have to require another medication at another time. So um, this is based on, again, what she was on at the time I prepared the life care plan. Sure. And it's our best guess. I mean, that's all we have to do is, you know, we have to use our best guess and we know somebody's on a certain medication. And so that's, you know, and we know that they're going to be on medication for the rest of their lives. Right. So give them an estimate. Um, and then here's some therapies and, you you know, recommended therapies. And again, how often, you know, uh, you need the therapy and then the total cost. And, uh, and so ultimately you come down and in this particular case, um, the life care plan came out to be between one point, say roughly 1.3 million to 1.5 million. Um, Correct. And this was, you know, it's an 18 page, a 36 page. I mean, so a, you're ultimately a 36 page report. And then you substantiate and you kind of show the resources that you mentioned in your report. And, uh, and you go through a lot of, you know, showing, like you said, the life tables, um, all those type of things are documented um, in, in detail. Uh, because you, you may, you know, if this case doesn't settle, then ultimately you may have to go to court. And obviously the other side, the other attorney is going to be asking you questions and you have to be able to defend your position. Yes, I do. Um, and not only that, it has to be um, 
I guess the, the, the both word is transparent. So if say I'm, I'm working for you and if the defense wants to hire an expert to take a look at my plan, they have to be able to replicate my plan or prepare a life care plan that's based on the same information that I have had. Um, so they, they will look at my life care plan and go, okay, I see this is what she's doing. This is what she's, you know, where she's got that information and they can then replicate it if they need to. And, and I know have you, you've had an occasion, I assume, to testify at trial? I have, yes. And um, so, so not all cases settle. Um, sometimes they take your depositions as well, I assume, and go through your plan. They, they do. Um, I've had many, many depositions. So of, of the life care plan uh, process, uh, what part do you like the best? What, what part do you, what, what part gets you up in the morning and, and, and helps you, you know, realize that you're, uh, you're doing something that you love and you're passionate about? You know, honestly, um, the whole process, uh, other than depositions, <laughs> um, you know, making, using my nursing skills to determine what somebody's going to need. Um, again, that goes back to my early days in, in the nursing home and developing a care plan on what, you know, what kind of care we need to provide for this patient. It's, for me, it, it's determining what kind of care does this person need? And am I going to be able to do the best that I can for this individual? Um, you know, and so getting into those records and speaking with them and being compassionate and, and having an open mind on, on the kinds of you know problems that they've gone through, um, and can I help them to make make things just a little bit better? The um, I, and I know that um, you know with me um, a lot of times talking to nurses um, is a far more beneficial <laughs> than talking to some doctors. Right, uh, and I think that. Um, you know, um, it, it's reassuring to my clients when you do talk to them or their family, um, it, they feel comfortable talking to you. And I think that's probably an important part of, of gathering the information. Um, and so you must enjoy it. I, I do. I do very, very much. Um, is there anything that you can you think of? So if somebody's listening to this who's been in an injury, has been severely injured, uh, or, or maybe not as severely injured, but they're listening to this, um, when should they think they should might talk to their attorney about, you know, hey, do we need one of these um, life care plans, one of these nursing life care plans? I would start at, as early as you possibly can, at least putting that bug in your in your attorney's ear. Um, just say, hey, you know, I've still got these these medical issues going on, and my doctors are saying that this may be something I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life maybe we need to get a life care planner involved. Um, you know, like you said, a lot, the majority of my cases are not necessarily for catastrophic injuries like traumatic brain or, or, or spinal cord injuries, but I do a tremendous number of abbreviated, what I call their medical cost projections. And those are just based on medications and doctor's visits or um, physical therapy and doctor's visits. Um, because of some someone has suffered maybe a soft tissue injury or you know a herniated disc or maybe they need to have surgery but they don't want to have that surgery now you know <laughs> they're too young to have a fusion but you know they're they maybe they have to have that later on and they but the case is wrapping up um talk with your with your attorney about a, a future medical plan life care plan or cost projection as early as you possibly can. Um, where I run into a sticky problem is if it's too early in the case and they're still treating actively. I mean, where they haven't even reached what, what you, we, you know, in the, in the legal field, you call the, you know, maximum medical improvement. Um, if they're still getting better and better, that's more difficult for me to prepare a plan because I don't know at what point are they going to stop getting better and now we're just going to be doing maintenance. No, don't you think, I mean, I, and I would assume there's, there, unfortunately, there are some lawyers that, that I see um, that they wait until a case doesn't settle. Um, and then they start looking if, at, you know, oh, guys, I better get my stuff in my ducks in order. Um, right. They start after the case doesn't settle, maybe after a mediation, 
that's when they start putting together the plan. Would you agree, though, that these are really important for the lawyers to have and the, and the injured party to have before they talk settlement? It, it is very important. And, and, you know, as an example, I had a, a client just, you know, last week that had a mediation and he calls and says, hey, you know, I've got this mediation. I know he's going to have future medical care. Can you put something together for the mediation so, you know, we can we can talk about it? Um, and he goes, he called me on Friday afternoon and after the mediation. He's like, hey, we settled for way more than we ever thought we would because of that plan. Um, and so it was not only beneficial for, for the client, you know, for the injured person, but it was beneficial for that, you know, for the attorney as well. So well, it scares me. It scares me on how many cases may get settled, though, um, it, every day. That, yes. Where the, where the people don't have a clue what their future care plan is. And, and as a, as a nurse and also, I mean, I'm a member, I mean, I'm pretty active in my community, um, you know, and so when I, when I talk to people and they ask me, oh, you're a nurse, well, what do you do? And I tell them, they're like, I had no idea that that was even, a, you know, and it was even out there. Or that was even um, something that was possible to, to do. And they and they would talk, tell me about their, you know, people that they knew that were in car accidents and they settled for, you know, minimal amount, but they're still in so much pain. Um, and so not only do I talk with you at conferences and attorneys at conferences, but I, you know, I talk to people in the community about what it is that I do and, and, you know, get, just trying to get that word around. Well, Shirley, thank you for being a, a guest on after the crash, the podcast. Uh, and thank you for everything you do for, for my clients and, and all the other lawyers clients out there. It is absolutely my pleasure. Thank you very much. This is David Craig, and you've been listening to After the Crash. If you'd like more information about me or my law firm, please go to our website, ckflaw.com. Or if you'd like to talk to me, you can call 1-800-ASK-DAVID. If you would like a guide on what to do after a truck wreck, then pick up my book, Semi-Truck Wreck, A Guide for Victims and Their Families. This is available on Amazon, or you can download it for free on our website, ckflaw.com. 